good morning hello everybody welcome let me get the big screen for the people in the room bit of bird song i think i, I don't know if i put the bird song on on monday night i can't i didn't i think i've turned it on but i didn't turn the speakers on there we go bit of bird song so you can see roughly what i've drawn and we're using the Clairefontaine paint on terra ver card no verdigree verdigree card um so you're are you both brand new to gouache yeah 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 okay so gouache is actually really old it's as old as watercolor believe it or not and in fact well white gouache is as old as watercolor and if you have ever gone to galleries or what have you and you see um something that was painted in body color that's white gouache so sir nicholas hilliard queen elizabeth the first yeah. portrait painter he worked in watercolors and body color so he used watercolor and white gouache the pre-raphaelites used watercolor and body color so it was basically to add more opacity to watercolor paint and um, then in the 50s maybe uh, gouache was invented and uh, in in a range of colors rather than just white so basically it's it's the same as watercolor uh, but it's got chalk in it so it makes it more opaque very flat and very matte so a lot of designers use it and so it's kind of like a better version of poster paint yeah yeah you will so it's a lot brighter and everything seems to look a bit more illustrative but that's what i like anyway um but what the the, the positive about gouache and where it works differently because I, I it's kind of in between acrylics and watercolor so you've got the fluidity of watercolor mm -hmm. but you've got the opacity of acrylics so you can put light on top of dark whereas with traditional watercolors you can't mm -hmm. but with acrylics when it's dry it turns to plastic and you can't do anything with it but with gouache when it's dry you can just re-wet it and blend so you've got more flexibility more with forgiving it's, it's yes more yeah more. much more forgiving <coughs> i think it's um it's a really interesting medium i, I do all my pet portraits mm -hmm. in gouache i was saying to deborah that she yeah. does amazing Oh, um, I'll show you one there. I've never done a whippet, mm. actually. That'd be my first whippet. I've done lots of. Um, see if I can find my album of animals. Do you think you could draw my little pinner? They were a bit podgy. <laughs> <laughs> I can do. <laughs> I can do a bit of Photoshop. That was one of the recent ones I did. That's gouache. Um, and there's another one. A little pug. I knew the pug. That's a, that's a dog that visits the cafe. Um, oh, that's not an animal. Hang on. Oh, those are two besties. One of them had passed away, so I had to do another one. No. No. Um, yeah, there, there's a little westie. Oh, some kittens. Um, now, that was for somebody who adopted two kittens yep. and then they found out they had cat flu and they hadn't had any of the injections, so she's nursed them. Yep. So um, the only photo she'd have of them as kittens were they're really poorly, so I made them look well. Um, oh, that's a hair. Ignore that hair. Uh, he was cute to do. Um, so I've done all sorts of animals. These are my sister's dogs. So I did a montage of all of them together. Um a lab. I've done quite a few labs. But you do catch the character of them as well. Well I do like to ask what the personality of the animal is. Yes. Yes. Oh that was one of my favourites. I did that over lockdown. That was a horse that had to be given away, so it's her with her head against his nose. Oh no. So um When there's a story it's like that's, that's Marley. Uh, I did that for a friend. Uh, these these aren't <laughs> these are two orangutans from Dudley Zoo. 
I enjoyed doing those. They, that was a huge painting. It sold last week, I think. So yeah, I've done all sorts of dogs, um, beagles, yeah. But the first whippet. Oh, I love Staffies. I had a Staffy crossed with a Jack Russell. Because I, I have two options. I do it either on a, a grey board, which is the more affordable one, with a mount, or I do them on wooden panels that will just hang. So it looks like ca it's it's yeah. like the way it looks like a canvas, yeah. but it's wood, yeah. uh, and it's thick and it just hangs on the wall. So I do them on wood, which is a bit more expensive, or I do them on grey board, which is uh, less expensive, but works quite well with most coloured animals. So you've got the option. There was a mixture of two on there that I showed you. You've never heard of um, a lady called Molly Harris, have you guys mentioned? No. Anyway, she was a great um, cameo on Marvel. She did it. Oh, lovely. Lovely. No, no. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. Oh, right. Antennae out and things. Oh, yeah, it's right. pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, I in, in my spare time I do commissions. I'm doing my ex-wife's dog at the moment. She's got a lab, a black lab. But she wants it on a black background. Oh, because that's what the professional photographers do now with black dogs. If you have a dog portrait, they will do a black dog on a black background and do a bit of dramatic lighting. So, so yeah. Okay. So that's kind of the thing. And can she you said, do that? "Oh, can you let us paint this? yeah." You well, I well I'll find out in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is with black, it's mainly blue. Because if you if you use grey for highlights on black, then it'll look old. But it's only a year. How old's the dog? About a year old? Two years? So it will just have a sheen on it. So if you think of the old Superman and Wonder Woman comics, the highlights in the black hair were always blue. Because uh, it just looks better visually. But yeah, I always ask about the personality. I, I, ha I do know the personality of my... Um, ex-wife's dog because there's an Instagram account and it's called what Winnie choose because Winnie choose everything um, so I know she's a little monkey um, but I, d I do find out if I can find out if they're spoiled if they're precious if they're naughty I I'll try and put their character in I'll give you another five minutes or so to sketch this out Yes. There was. I mean, you did pick a really tricky lesson. I didn't say that. I said of all the things. I think it's probably one of the trickiest things I've ever done. I've done quite a few with you in the class. Absolutely. It it was tricky on Monday night. Did she enjoy it though? She did enjoy it. That's she all right really then. Are you the ringleader, Amanda? <laughs> the ringleader. Don't worry, Julie. Yeah. Don't worry, Julie. We can capture that horse that's running down the road. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jackie, I met last night a dog who was a, a young, oh, what's that, what's that one that I tried to capture in the street that was oh. wild? What's the guy with the one? They're like the Razorback, no. Oh, the, 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 the
Rhodesian, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, Ridgeback yeah. Ridgeback, yeah. Oh, she was so sweet. She was so gentle. Oh, oh God. Well, there's a long story while you're finishing drawing. Um, one, the cafe was on holiday. And um, I was working up here early in the morning. And I heard um, a massive woof sound from up the street. And then yelp, 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 yelp of a baby little dog. Then lots of shouting. And, and I the window up stuck my head up and I saw this massive dog that must have attacked a little baby dog and they were picking the baby up and they were on the phone to the police or whatever and this dog was just pacing up and down really angry um, and I thought do you know what I need to keep that dog here because it, it could do more damage if it's anywhere else so I ran downstairs um, opened the fridge found a pack of chorizo and I lay on the floor outside the cafe enticing the dog round yeah. and I kept the dog there it wouldn't come close to me I didn't know it was a ridgeback I thought it was really angry and his hackles were up oh, if oh, I'd have known it was a ridgeback <laughs> I'd have got much closer <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd have got closer yeah. and just because yeah. I wanted to bring him into the shop behind my gate to keep him safe because I could see he was scared he yeah. wasn't he wasn't necessarily angry yeah. but he was barking quite he aggressively to everyone because yeah. he was lost yeah. um, and I thought, oh, I'll just keep him here till the dog handler's arrived. No dog handler's arrived. Police arrived with a flimsy little leash. Mm -hmm. And they just wafted it at me and said, do you reckon you can get that on him? Because we don't want to go too close. And I went, it won't fit round his head. I mean, I nearly did. I mean, I had the lead over <laughs> and then through my hand. And then I had Cerezo and Leslie was here at the time. And I said, can I, have you got any sandwiches or anything? Because we'd run out of food. I was throwing him just everything to keep him here. Um, Three and a half hours I was on the floor with him um, and uh, when I looked up the owners had arrived because he'd, he'd got lost he's a, he was a rescue dog and he'd escaped from the owner's house and he just got lost and he was really scared and when I looked up the police had cornered, cordoned off the top of Parson Street the, bot the down to Church Lane they weren't allowing anybody past because it was an aggressive dog and there was just me on the floor with this dog throwing chorizo at it and keeping it together. It was really bizarre, a bizarre morning, really. Um, but um, I did say to the owners when they got the dog, don't keep him in the car too long, because what I fed him, I don't think it'll... Um, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> was he all right? He was fine, he was fine. I don't think there were any... It was fine, I think it was just a little yeah. graze. Okay. Um, and I don't think he was... Uh, any, any anything came of it because he was lost. He wasn't an aggressive yeah, yeah. dog. He, yeah, he wasn't going out to attack. He was just no. yeah. in a panic. Yeah, yeah. and and he was just like, oh, what do I do? Mm. And anything was a threat. So that was a really fun morning. But this little lovely dog called Lara, she'd had to have an operation on her ear, and she got a little bandage hat over her head, and she was so sweet, yeah. cute little dog. But the ridge, because the ridge was really pronounced down right down the whole back, because yeah. they're bred in groups to help hold lions in place. Oh, is that but what it yeah, is? Um, for the hunters to kill the lion, so they would corner the lion. There's oh, yeah, so there's not there's enough of them for the power. But the the boy dog that I was feeding Charito to, he was so muscular. Yeah. It was it was that was intimidating yeah. to a lot of people walking past. Mm. But if I'd have known it was a ridgeback, if someone had said it's a ridgeback, yeah. I would have not yeah. presumed it was Hackles mm -hmm. and I'd have just grabbed him and dragged him in the shop. Yeah. Yeah. But you live and learn. It's a f it was a really interesting morning. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't particularly want to. I mean, people must have thought, who, who, uh, who on earth is this bloke? Or maybe they thought I was a tramp or something with a dog just lying on the floor with sandwiches <laughs> gathered all around me and bits of meat. <laughs> Well, yeah. Yes, they yeah. were. I mean, the guy that the, the, yeah. the only yeah. one police officer with a bit of a lead that wandered round, he stayed like here. I was here, and the dog was there. There was no police mm. around him. Yeah. And then every time anything got close to him, he got spooked, and that's trying to call him back yeah. and win him back again. It was. Um, the ridge is gorgeous, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Beautiful. And they're gorgeous colour, a nice mm. gingery oh, brown. Colour, yeah, yes. yeah. I'm sure we've got some of those colours, you know. I think we've got some of them. Well, well we did have. have got my <laughs> <laughs> See you in a bit. Um, I was looking through your brochure. Yes. And I'm a bit gutted because one of the sessions that I really want to do is your four-day oil classes. 
Oh yes. Oh, the fr oh Friday nights. They're, they're Friday nights. They're the first Friday evening each month. Have you got all yours? Yeah, yeah. And they're like three quarter day. I think, what am I doing? I'm doing a... Oh yeah, oil. It is a stormy sea. A stormy yeah, 24th of September. There's a stormy sea in oil. 10 till 2. Um, but, but I have to do the online, the online version. Yeah. It's good stuff. Right, so we've got a, lots of small brushes. Because I use um, a tinted paper, it's mixed media paper, so it's nice and thick. Um, I tend to not need to use much in the way of... Um, I find a background colour that works well for the image. So often I'll use either grey, mm -hmm. a blue grey, or this green grey. I tend to, I've tend i been using the green grey quite a lot lately. So we can tint it a little bit, but we don't need to do much. I don't ever take my gouache down because I can move it about more. Um, and because we're not saturating it, we don't need to do as much with it. So we can... Do a little bit on the background. Um, quite a few colours, black and white. You always need black and white with gouache. Uh, lemon yellow, ultramarine, cerulean blue, cadmium red and cadmium yellow. So um, the lemon yellow is the brighter one. I think on your tiles I've done you with white, uh, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, ultramarine, cerulean blue, cadmium red and black. That's the order. So if I go with my small, uh, well, with the, the biggest of the small brushes, the biggest of the small brushes, the little flat ones, you might have two of those. And I want to make a sort of teal colour for the background bit. So we'll go with cerulean, which is the brighter blue. And a little bit of the orangey yellow, the cadmium yellow, which is the second one, which should make a bit of a teal. And you could dull it down if you wanted to with a pinhead of red. If it's too bright, add a little bit of red. The orangey yellow. And then I'm going to put that on around the base where the grass is a, a, a tiny bit of red so I'm going to put that a blob like that and then nah just shove it on and then I'm wetting it and blending it out because it's opaque as well you can you can have a bit of fun with it in that um, you can it's okay to go over certain areas uh too much red too much red so uh, counteract the brown with a bit more blue and a bit more yellow so i'm just blending it up you'll find it reacts differently to the watercolors Nice teal colour, teal or turquoise or whatever you want to call it, um, and then we just pop it on. Now, what I will say is, you don't want to overwork because you'll go through your card. So, what you're best off doing is doing a bit of it, letting it dry, and then going back in. If you go in and, and keep it wet. Yeah, because we can cover it all up. So the part of the drawing that you're doing is the background. Yes, just the background. Okay. Um, and you've just added water to blend it out. Yeah. Make it weaker. Yeah, make it weaker around the edges. Okay. So it it saves us having to use a lot of paint because we've already got a greeny background, haven't we? So yeah. we don't need it overly green. And if you blend it out in a sort of swirly motion, it stops any hard edges. Yeah. 
and it looks a bit more natural. But you can build it up and do all sorts of things with it, but you're best off pacing yourself. Because it's harder to mix the same colour, so if you do a bit and then you need to mix a bit more, that's okay. But it is a bit trickier. But because gouache is a little bit heavier, or oh, do you know what? I need to go over where my um, water droplets are because I didn't. Because gouache is a little bit heavier than watercolour, you don't get cauliflowers in the same way as you would have done last night, uh, Monday night. Because it's a heavy medium. But this is just background, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But if you see little balls appearing, that's your paper, so down tools and let it dry. Um, I'm doing a, a little extra bit of blend, so I'm twisting the brush on its side very quickly between my finger and thumb to break up any lines that might be there. Which I do make look very easy, and apparently it isn't. Especially if you've not great got great dexterity between finger and thumb. So this is very different to last week's gouache, isn't it, to Amanda? Yeah. That's the trouble. The simple ones are often the most difficult. Um, we did one in acrylics yesterday. Which was a bit like what we were doing last week in gouache. Oh, um, the the yeah. Floor. That looks amazing. But it was lots of blobs and dabs. Yeah. Which is that, that was the acrylic that we did yesterday. Look at that. Oh, my God. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice to do, but it. Uh, it the, the tree looked lovely as well. The, is it an old tree? Oh, that was, yeah, Monday morning. Was that Monday? Yeah. I don't tend to put those on because the, the, the Monday morning group is at the village hall and they tend to... Is that to, a morning group? Yeah. And they do like a bit of a chat sometimes and mm -hmm. sometimes a bit of a chat mm -hmm. exceeds the sound on the microphone than my demonstration. So if they're quiet, then I'll put it up. But I can't always tell what mood they're in. Twisting, yeah, twisting the, your, your brush, dance it about a little bit, a bit of texture, just makes it a bit different. I mean, you could actually add a little bit more further up in the twisty motion, just so you, you what could happen is, is it could end up looking like you've just gone around that bit. Yeah. So if you use a little bit further up randomly, and let it dry. You'll find it dries in an interesting way because it does go matte um, and flat. So when you've got the moisture on, I'll just hold it up so you can see mine without the projector screen because it does change the tone a little. But that that's kind of it for the background. Hopefully you'll find this much easier to work with than, yes. than the other. Yeah. But it's quite nice to learn. What I'll do is I'll give you a, I'll give you a bigger brush. 
which will help you blend out a little bit more I've if you got, need to. I've got lots of blocks of things going on. Yeah, mm. try, try using a slightly bigger brush because yeah. that'll, that'll yeah. hide a lot of the brush strokes. Because you basically, it's an out of focus forest, isn't it? So it, there's going to be lots of tones and textures and things mm. in there. No, I've I've gone round there, but there is hints of colour up there. If I do it, I'll do a slightly stronger version, a bit further up, because I've run out of I've run out of paint. But if I do a little bit up here, and give it a bit of a twist, and then clean brush, and fade it out, it just spreads the dark and makes it more naturally uneven because I think that's the hardest thing to do is be random yeah. we're not good at random us humans and the more we think we're being random when we look we're actually not random at all but what's nice about gouache is that you can cover it all up if you know you can put if you've done something really dark you can do something light over the top and it will be fine Similar toadstool, actually, I think. Yeah, that's lovely. On a mossy tree. I do like toadstools. And this is what we did the other week on the green card. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's cool. Little snail eating a berry. Um, those frames look lovely. Oh, these, I'll yeah. get these from our supplier because they can frame canvases yeah. as well. They're a deep edge, so you can see. But what's nice is it's perspex, it's not glass, yeah. so it's yeah. not heavy. Well, I tend to only get them in now for me because we've got the picture framers next door, so I yes. try not to step on their toes because then. You only start a war, don't you? Mm. When are they open? Um, the gallery next door is open, um, I think, nearly every day apart from Sunday. Yeah, we, we just um, got, maybe it opens at 10. Like I think it is a 10. 10. Or half 10 or whatever. We just got things a bit early. I like that one of the Queen. Have you looked in there, Barry? Yeah, I went in the other day um, and I they did the augmented reality yeah. thing with it. Yeah. But no, I was saying that Mark Marrow in the village, he, yeah. he doesn't do the painting, but he puts together all the technical side. You know, you look at it, all the um, the artist's yeah. process, yeah. if you like, what and then the tools? images. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, it's a, the ones that are in there at the minute, when you hold the app in front of the painting, the painting comes to life oh, on the yeah. screen with so extra narratives and images. and. Yeah, so it's a bit of a, an attack on all the senses, really. Yeah. So um, don't try to spend too long on the background because it, mm. it is just there to set the scene rather than... Cover. And you'll know when it starts to dry because the, the, the bendiness of the paper will straighten back out. But you can always whack the hair dryer on it. Let me put the hair dryer on this. Because the toadstool itself is quite a bright green, uh, well, a bright yeah. teal, um, which I'll use a slightly smaller flat brush for, I think. Let me see if I can get this colour right, so even more, so it's going to be very similar to what we've done, but with more of the cerulean. No red. It's a smaller brush. Yeah, 
just for co just for control i tend to go with even smaller brushes because it, it stops me from racing ahead um, and then i'm going to go with a tiny bit of white which makes it much much chalkier and a tiny bit of yellow t tiny weeny bit of yellow uh, cadmium yellow so it's it's the same two parts but it's more blue and no red so it's cerulean blue yeah cerulean blue the bright blue rather than the darker yeah so there's the blue a little tiny bit of yellow and a little tiny bit of white Yeah, yeah. So it's the same as your background, really, but a bit bluer and a little bit chalkier because we're making a bit of white in there just to start with. And a tiny bit of yet of the yellow, of the orangey yellow, just a little bit, because we'll lighten it. So that'll be our darker tone, and then we'll add lights to it. make it feel a bit magical add more blue you want you want lots of blue hardly any yellow but if you've got some that's if, if you've still got a bit of the greeny color left on your palette that's fine because that will help yeah. us with the highlights shortly It's, more, it's interesting to get the colours. You want to add more of the original colour back. And keep some of that for the highlight, to be honest. Because the highlight colour is a bit more yellow and a bit more white. So, um... The, the frustrating thing with gouache is you don't actually know what it's going to do until it dries. See, I'm just, I'm trying out so this mix. Yeah, the, the small flat one I'm using. Still the, small. The, the smallest Very flat, small. yeah. So I've just made like this minty toothpaste <laughs> colour, um, which is more yet a bit more yellow and a bit more white and it kind of absorbs itself into the color that's underneath a little which is good. So we end up doing two or three layers on everything. And then I'm painting the stripes. Now technically there's the, you see the other toadstool looks more purple behind it, doesn't it? The out of focus one. It does. So we'll do what it looks like because a little bit more white and a little bit more yellow for for this stripey thing yeah and it doesn't matter if it's only a little bit lighter because you can make it lighter later try saying that three times fast <laughs> So whereas watercolour dries lighter, gouache dries more like emulsion. You know like when you paint the walls? It, it dries very much like emulsion in that it goes very flat and very matte. And it's Or chalk paint, if you've used any Sloan chalk paint or anything like that, it, it's very much in that essence. And if I want to go lighter again, I'll go with a bit more white and a bit more yellow. 
because that will give us that lovely little glow and again you won't necessarily know until it dries and you can always blend it in with a bit of water I've just lost my um, ladybird foot that I've spent ages getting the angles right but never mind Yeah, you need a lot of water with it. You'll get there. It sounds like you know what you're talking. Yeah. It's impressive. So yeah, just keep playing with those three colours of the blue, the yellow and the white. Because you might need to make something a bit darker if, if you go, oh, I've gone too wrong. See, I might go a little bit darker. And under the edge of the mo the toadstool a little. You'll you'll get there with this. It's a very different medium. Because it doesn't it doesn't feel like watercolour and it doesn't feel like acrylics. It's it's very much on its own. So you can add as much as detail as you want or as, as little. But don't stress about it. That's the important thing. Because we know we can cover it up. So if your toadstool's a little bit more on the green side, that's okay. Because we can change it. If it's more on the blue side, we can change it. But also, you might actually prefer it looking a bit more blue or a bit more green. Like, like we were saying on Monday, I'm, I'm adding a bit more green on parts of mine. Because I really just want, the idea is to get that lovely glow on the top and I might have to go with almost neat white. If it won't get any lighter. So does anybody need any more paint yet or are you alright? We're not going to be using much of the cerulean after this. Although there is a bit of... The ladybird's got a bit of a shadow on it, hasn't it? So maybe the slightly darker colour that I mixed up, I'll stick in there. White and yellow. Yeah, white and yellow. Yeah. And that'll be my ladybird shadow. Just to make it feel more of a glow. But you might find... If you've got a lot of paint on there to let it totally dry so yeah. you can see exactly what colour it is because you can always go back to it. So this isn't like watercolour where you have to work from light to dark. Um, I've, I've been known with a gouache painting to do everything and then go back and put more light back on mm -hmm. 
in other areas because as it dries it um it changes which is a little bit annoying but these things happen Eleven, eleven. So we're forty five minutes in nearly. And then you've gone to dark. Yeah, I, well, no, I, I, it's the same colours. Uh, you know how we made the background colour with the blue, the tiny bit of yellow and a tiny bit of red. Just dulls it down a little bit. So you can use a few darker stripes, so that's just the blue. Yeah, you can just use the blue or you could use the blue with a tiny bit of the red to dull it down. Because that blue is quite bright on its own. I mean, there's a lot about colour mixing and colour theory that is, is quite confusing. Like the cadmium red and the cerulean blue on your tiles are very bright, aren't they? But when you mix them together, they make a very dull purple. Because uh, cerulean blue is green-based blue and cadmium red is an orange-based red. So um, you never get a bright purple out of those two. I'm just trying to clean my red. My red is really disgusting, so I need to... I have a nice bright red for my ladybird, so I'm just cleaning it in preparation. Um, the, the ground bit is going to be really easy. So a lot of fashion designers use gouache. Uh, yeah, because it's... Um, yeah, well, it's because you can get really good, strong, flat areas. Um, I I was talking to my students on Monday about uh, Brian Cook, who was an artist of the 30s and 40s that did um, all of the Batsford Press illustration covers. You know, the very... I've got a book of it. Is that when they were trying to get away from the, all the, all the um, mass production? Well, sort of. It was just a very different, different <laughs> style. Um, so Brian Cook. Oh, it's more finely done, really. And complexly. You know, scenes like that. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. More like the yeah. railway posters yeah. and things. So that would yeah. be using stuff like gouache. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've worked. Yeah. yeah, I've worked in a lot. I I did um, the visit Banbury. Uh, postcard and greeting card that we do um, we I used gouache for that and did it like an old railway poster and I've done a few things in that style using gouache which is really nice to do as you're getting your highlight you know your yellowy colour if you add a, a pinhead of the red and literally just a pinhead of the red to the highlight colour, you should get a colour that is like a really manky orange. And that will be perfect for your stem. So use your highlight colour, which is your yellow and your white, with a tiny bit of red. You can whack on a bit of the green if you wanted um, to dull it down. Because we don't want a brown and we don't want an orange. In fact, I haven't actually got any brown to mix today. We're not using brown. Yeah, and then you can add more white if you want to make it glow. Not too much red. Cadmium red is what I call a hungry colour. And it will eat everything on your palette. So you just want a slightly dirty orange. And you can lighten that later. Because then that toadstool's done and dusted. So the highlight yeah. colour on my toadstool, yeah. which was mainly yellow and white, yeah. with a pinhead of the red in it. That's the stalk. Yeah. yeah. 
And you can add more white if you want to lighten it. Dear, um, is it hard to see? Well, I've got it's a very focal focal, um, and I thought, no, that'll be fine, I can do this, but no, because right. you're constantly having to readjust your yeah, image, yeah. aren't you? It's, yeah, it's all right. I mean, it's, it, I, I, yeah, I have one it's student fine, that has two pairs of glasses, and sometimes yeah. she's got both of them on, know, yeah, and then so she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah having yeah, to take one right. off on top of her head to look up at the screen, yeah. and then flick the other one down and the other one up, and yeah. Yes. You see, those of you, those of you that have got, if you've got smartphones, um, and I have other students that do this, I can, I can always give you the video link, and you could watch the video link on mute on your smartphone in the room. So you can have it, because I have other students that will do that if they can't see the screen very well. Um, they'll oh, yeah, look yeah, yeah. No, no, I am, I'm not, it's alright but yeah, yeah that's what but it's all stuff that you don't know until it happens or doesn't happen yeah, isn't it because yeah. there you go this is what it would look like on your screen But this is your first foray into gouache, isn't it? Yes. So you're getting used to mm. how the paint handles, which is really different, isn't it? I mean, when you think about the watercolour last on Monday night, that's very different yeah. and it's very light and fluid. Yeah. Whereas this is quite chunky and it is like painting with emulsion. That's kind of the the best thing I can work with. I'm just going to paint the ladybird's back, the shell, with cadmium red. And that's with, with, with the ever brush that you feel comfortable using. I'm using the very tiny flat. If you prefer a bigger brush, use that. Or a bright red to start with. But what I will do is where there's highlights on her shell, I'll make her more of an orange with the cadmium yellow and the red. Just neat cadmium red. There will be a bit of yellow, I think, when that, as that's drying. And I want to see. The highlights. Um, if you use a bit more water, you can. No, you'll be all right. As long as you're not using a lot of water. A little bit of water is fine. So if you've always got sort of a, a damp to wet brush, yeah. that will help blend a little. Okay. And again, you can use yellow and white if you wanted more of a stronger highlight you can't unless you use gouache or you know yeah. so then it's mixed media yeah. but with 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 gouache, you just use it however you find it easier to work with. But yeah, a little bit of um, 
a little bit of a damp brush does help with the blending but you'll get used to that I think because you don't want the paint too runny no, and you don't want no. the paint too dry so it's it it's it's an interesting medium I mean I do love I do love working in gouache but I've been doing it for a long time so that's yeah. that's the difference See, I might even end up going with a bit more yellow and white as a thin highlight. But it's one of those things where it doesn't... It's quite disjointed until towards the end. And I'm using yellow and white rather than just white to highlight. Because otherwise the ladybird would go pink. And that's quite nice. I think once you've got the ladybird on and the black bits go on, like the spots and the, the head, it will give you a bit more encouragement maybe with the rest of it I'll probably have to put highlights on this as well, but I'm doing his legs black, everything black, because I can always highlight them afterwards. So I'm not going to worry. So then just neat black. Yep, just neat black on its own. Just black on its own, yeah. But you can add lots of highlights onto the ladybird if you want to, with yellows or oranges. Mix an orange, mix a bit of yellow, a bit of white. But again, you can do that afterwards as well. So, um, you know, after we've done a few other bits, you might think, oh, do you know what? I need to lighten that a bit more. Or, oh, I need to darken that a bit more. You've got, you've got the option in gouache to do that. Whereas with the watercolour class on Monday, you were kind of stuck once you'd done what you'd done. But with this, there's a little bit more freedom. But I've had some students that attend a couple of every class that they 
might be interested in to see which they're actually naturally better at because when people say i don't I, I can't do art well that's a really broad sweeping statement isn't it because which bit of art can't you do because you might be able to do watercolours and you might excel in portraits and you might, even if you don't want portraits, that might be where your natural talent is. So the, the trouble is you're naturally good at something that you may not want to do. I mean, there, uh, there is sort of whiter highlights on, on the ladybirds. Um, you could do it with an orange, I guess. The antennae and legs and... The mossy stuff will be the easiest bit to do. Um, so for me, the next thing's going to have to be the purple toadstool. In fact, you know, if you still got any of the colour of your stem of your other toadstool, have you still got any of that left on your tile? Because even if it's dry, you can just pick it up and transfer it. So that's that's done then. Which I love about gouache is that if my tile is dry, I just add a bit of water and I've yeah. I can get the colour back. So in that sense, it is like watercolour. Yeah. And sometimes for really bright highlights, I might end up going back with a white gel pen at the end when it's really dry. Does anybody want a halfway drink? Um, I'm You're all right. Nice anybody want to drink one? No, I'm fine. Do you need a drink, Amanda, or are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I might. I think I need a cat drink. Because <laughs> they gave us free drinks yesterday. And they, they wouldn't let us have no, free. you get one free drink for your, gla for your class. No. Yes, yes. Fine. Well, what we do is um, <laughs> we... We've we've got we have an arrangement so with our students mm -hmm. we write down everybody gets one drink free, mm -hmm. either before or during halfway, um, and then we we sort it out between ourselves downstairs. Right. You see, so you get you get a free one, right. so you don't have to feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. But did you want one? What do you have to? Cup of tea. Yeah. Um, let me give you the money. Can I ask you to pull them up? Can I just get them two? Yeah. yeah. At the end of the corridor <laughs> on the left. What was the season? One pound fifty. Yeah, I, it's just a hunt, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's frustrating. But it's not too much. It's, it's, um, 
um, I, 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 I think the watermark. So yeah, since yeah. since since yeah. meeting yeah. at the nursery yeah. this morning. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So much concentration here. Yeah. It's hard painting, isn't it? Mm. It's hard to paint. You, you do a lot of painting. Yeah, yeah. well, some You have only done it abstract. It's exactly good. Can you see that abstract up there? I just try to do it. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. I have so much tacky. Yeah. 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 Jack is pretty quick. Jack, if you come and join this class, Jack, I'll yeah. be done. Yeah, I'm really patient. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, my patience. I think the rush is going to get to it, though, because you think it's going to dry one way. I know, yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of white. 
Very different medium, isn't it? It is. You're very quiet. I know, it's a concentration. Can you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, Amanda. Are you pleased with yeah. that? Probably it is nice. <laughs> it well, is. Is. Yeah. Actually, yeah. these, are, look, these yeah. are nice. Because you you're can... You're, you've got a ladybird face there, do you? Like mine looks like a turtle. <laughs> mine looks like a turtle. <laughs> mine definitely looks like a turtle. It's got a little beak on it. Nice colour, it's a jetpack. Jetpack, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it is got it has got quite a lot of blue down there though, hasn't yeah, it? it? And it has got blue yeah, there. So you have actually <laughs> got you you've got, you've to be honest, you've got a better, more accurate colour background than I've done because I never bothered with any green. Which I should have done. But I didn't because I'm naughty. It has got a lot of vibrant green. And then we've got more greens down here that we'll do. So the purple purple toadstool will be the other blue and a bit of red oh that's purple I've, I've mixed the wrong that's ultramarine oh. oh did I not give you there's right ah oh, it looks like black that's the other blue oh that's black yes oh, oh, that. Like that. but that yeah, yeah. get That's all right. But was black the black? Was that right? We were using no, we're using the blue. We're using the ultramarine blue, which is the one I've just that squeezed one. out. That one. Yeah, that one. Very but nice. I'm doing this quite That's runny. Red. Try to make a, a brown. So yeah, it, it's too much red. Yeah. Hung hungry colour. Tiny bit of blue. Pinhead of red. Pinhead of red, that's the motto that we go with. And then a bit of white around the edge and you can blend it in. But mine, because this is out of focus, I'm doing it quite runny. It's only a bit of paint, isn't it? It doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Aubergine. Yeah, it is aubergine. So if you add a bit more water with it, the white of the tile shows you what the colour can be. Have you got a shimmery toadstool, Amanda? Are you finding this harder than watercolours or easier or are you not sure yet? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure because I think, I was just thinking actually about the same stage on Monday, which was about halfway through, through, yeah. halfway through I thought, this is really hard and then it, and then it, so I, I felt that yeah. and then, yeah. It suddenly then, happened. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the cobweb with the water droplets, that's that's not as difficult as it looks if you've got a nice thin brush and just white. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll do the cobweb it, lines it, it, first. It gives a lot of effect, yeah. Mm. And that does have to be really dilute. So I've done it quite dilute. The, the more water you add, you see, to gouache, the more transparent it gets. So I'm using a really thin brush. And the water droplets, I'm also doing just as a circle to start with. Just white, yeah. Just white. The the, the frustrating thing about uh, water droplets is that the droplet itself is upside down. If you notice, the sky is at the bottom of a water droplet, not the top. So you can make the the underside a little bit heavier with white.
And it almost looks like a water droplet straight away, but... Um, no, but I, I'm, I'm going to rhyme with my water droplets, so if you have colour behind, I'll just You can always add a bit of the darker colour in the middle, because it's darker at the top, and I might actually make it a little bit darker anyway. Because what you can do, you see, is you can... Because you can reconstitute gouache, you can pick up some of your upper outline and blend it in a little bit with a damp brush and that makes it a little bit cloudier got a drawing class this afternoon and we it's a really tricky one so if you see anyone don't tell them <laughs> it's the river nid with a viaduct a train and boats but the hardest actually it's more of an exercise on what to miss out. So I'm, I've got, I've still got some of the dark teal on my uh, tile. So I'll do the, a little bit of that in there as well. Just so you can see. Yes, because yeah. you need the background through it. But you can always add a bit more colour. Oh, I've missed it. I've missed one off. I didn't. I've. Yes, so it's um, the light, the sky is reflecting more, so that's your whitest bit at the bottom. Yeah. You can always blend it in a little bit with a damp brush if it's too light. Okay. And there's sort of a, an orangey one on... Um, on one of the glass grass blades so you can do that with some red and yellow as well if you're in while you're in the mood You'll be pleased to know that's it for the tricky stuff. You can choose whether or not to believe me. I think you'll love next Monday evening because you're all coming to next Monday, aren't you? Oh, you're not. You're away, aren't you? Oh, well, yeah, anything can happen, can't it, at this moment? It's always nice to have a backup plan, yeah. isn't it? Because where, where were you going? Where are you Spain. going? Spain. Spain. It's 44 there today. Oh, God, that's the other thing. <laughs> I mean, it's double what it is today. I couldn't yeah. cope with it. I, no. Anything over 24, no. I'm a ginger, and I can't, no, I can't. No, no, no. I turn to dust. Yeah. <laughs> 
I get very uncomfortable in the warm weather if it's too warm yeah. and I get quite agitated and yeah. grumpy because yeah. I'm just too hot. It's not healthy, is it? Can't cool. No, because it's, isn't it? Isn't it a warm breeze from coming over from Africa or something over it uh, over Spain at the moment? Yeah, but Friday's going to be absolutely scorching, isn't it? And then yeah. It's going to be raining. Yeah. So I think it's going to get to 24 today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I think um, Friday's going to be like 26, 28, isn't it, or something? So, Barry, what did you put inside your bubble to make it a little bit darker? Um, I made some more of that teal with the cerulean blue and a bit of red. You know, what you did yeah, with, yeah. Your, with your dark bits. I was just trying to have a look at the weather and I ended up on the petrol one. It's the same colour app. <laughs> Daily. Oh yeah, 29 on Friday. Which will be a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I get, I'm more interested in the pollen count at the moment because mm, that's yeah. what affects me more. Poor air quality at the moment as well, but very high grass pollen, which is what affects me more than anything. That might be odd. So much sneezing this morning. Yeah, oh. grass pollen's high all week. Mm. So I'm going to put a base colour. Well, it'd be a couple of different tones for the moss, but it'll be the ultramarine, which is the blue we've hardly used so far, and lemon yellow, which I don't think... I, I haven't used the lemon yellow yet, which is the brighter one. Ultramarine, which is the darker blue. And quite a dark green you want a dark green yeah ultramarine and lemon yellow and i'm kind of just stabbing it all over the mossy bit mm -hmm. with the smaller flat brush and quite quite a bit of water to be honest this is dark dark water. dark dark although mine's coming out quite lemony even though it is quite a dark green on my tile but that's okay because basically I want it even darker I'm gonna go over the bits of grass that I've drawn as well just shove shove all of this on and I'm kind of doing it in an agitated way so my brush marks could look like parts of moss or something not too much water, just enough to move the paint. But it balances out though, actually, because it is quite that top is quite green and that's quite green. Yeah, you've actually got it right. I, I haven't. I might I might actually I might actually have to copy you in a minute and do a bit of light green right at the top. Yeah, quite a lot of blue and a brighter yellow. Um, and then I'm adding a bit more blue as I get down that bottom right corner. Nah, just shove it on.
but I am sort of like doing zigzag zag lines with my uh, with my brush strokes so it gives the illusion in fact if I've got a bit more lemon yellow on my brush I'm gonna copy you and have a slightly lighter green up here I just flicked up with the brush, yeah, with with the brush on its edge. On its edge. Which size brush? The smaller flat, well, the yeah. the larger of the smaller flat one, but not the massive one that I gave you afterwards. Oh, okay. yeah. If that makes any yeah. sense at all, well done if it does. See, we might the top and dark at the Basically, yeah, and then we'll do actual stipply stuff in a minute. That's the trouble when you've got a lot of colours though, isn't it? Yeah. Until you're more familiar with them, it can be tricky. But yeah, next Monday evenings is, is a lovely... I showed it, you didn't I, the autumn, the, the wintry tree with the sunset yeah. behind it. You'll really like that. Oh, we're doing a sleeping fox next Wednesday. Oh. Are you will hear you here for that? Yeah. Are you you're, you're away, and that's the only thing that we do. We're doing an yeah, animal in gouache. I'm just trying to. Um, I wonder what. I've got um, an appointment in acupuncture. It's 10:30, isn't it? 10:30. So, so I, I, if, I, if I can make it, I will. I'm well, it will be running it. regardless. Yeah, so just. Know. Yeah. Rock up with your needles in you, it doesn't matter. We're very accommodating here, you yeah. see. I told you we had a beagle in the class, didn't I, the other week? A beagle? A beagle, yeah, because one of my students, it was their... their their grand dog and uh, they were looking after him and they said I can't come to class because I've got the dog unless the dog can come and I said I'd already met the dog before and I love dogs and I went you're the only student in the class this morning so bring the dog so little Archer came and he sat down by the side of me and I'm glad I'm right-handed because I could use my left hand to give him a, a, a munch uh, and then he fell asleep under Jackie's chair for a bit and he came around he was really good and then at the end of the class I got on the floor for cuddles I do like dogs. Hopefully you can start to see how it's working a little bit more now, perhaps. I, myself, am tempted to do a very runny black right at the base of the, what I'm going to call the background, to try and darken it in places, but that could ruin everything. So you may not want to do it. And if you don't, that is fine. Because I haven't been very... I was a bit overly cautious with my background. And I shouldn't have been. Well, I'm, I will just get. I've just added a bit of black in the darker areas, just because my background wasn't dark enough. And then when that's dry, I'm going to make a, a brighter green with more lemon and a little bit of white. And then we're going to do a bit of stabbing. Yeah, basically. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, sometimes that is the, and I've said this to students before because I realise I do 
something similar. What I do is I'll mix a lovely colour. Yeah. I mix a lovely colour up, the, the colour that I want. Yeah. And then as I'm running out, I just add more water to it. Yeah. Yeah. But then it actually stops becoming the colour that I want because I've diluted it too much. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just go for it and mix a bit more. So it's just it's just about being a bit braver, but you know, it's only a bit of paint, isn't it? You don't want to beat yourself up over it. I might do some slightly darker mossy tones first, and then you can put the highlights on top in gouache, can't you? So. While you're doing your background, I'm going to attempt my really dark green, which is going to be um, ultramarine, lemon yellow, and a little bit of black. Black is extremely strong, so you need to be a little bit more cautious, because the black will turn everything black. It does. Yeah. It does go a lot further. Um, but... Um, you can dilute your gouache more once you've got a bit more confidence and you know yeah. where you're going with it. So with this dark green that I've made, I'm kind of creating stabby fronds down in the lower part. And this is a bit of lemon yellow, a lot of ultramarine and a little bit of black. So this is all about our texture, a bit of depth. And as the, fa as, the, as the flat brush runs out of paint, it gives us a very, very nice stabby, dotty effect. So this is the darker? Yeah, dark dark, this is the ultramarine, the dark blue, a bit of lemon yellow and a little bit of black. But be careful with the black, because that will just, <laughs> everything will go black. Yeah, stabbing in a sort of, I'm trying to think about it being a bit of plant-based stuff now. So I'm kind of doing little lines and V-shapes and... Do um, you need to dry Your brush doesn't want to be sopping wet. But the underneath bit... Um, a little bit dry, yeah. But you can always use a hairdryer if you want. Or you could let it dry naturally. We've got half an hour, but as you know, the last half of the lesson tends to fly by. Because we've got the moss to put on and then the big blades of grass on the right hand side. Are you enjoying it though? Yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. It's different isn't it? Yeah. So do you think you like gouache or not? Or are you not yes. sure? It's getting to used to using yeah. it, isn't it? How how would you, yeah, I I don't know what do you do I with it? Or left or, or all good for new. Yes, I think you'd need a couple of each, you know, yeah. two or three of each yeah. to work out which which is more for you. Yeah. I've got some that go definitely prefer gouache. I've got others that prefer water, haven't we? We've got loads of. Yeah. It's all personal preference, isn't it? There is a lot of personal preference. Yeah. Don't think about it. Grab, grab your elbow. What, what I found is because I'm talking all the time to you while I'm painting, it means I'm not thinking about it, so I'm just being random. Whereas you lot aren't talking, so you're concentrating and it gets less random because you're overly thinking about it. So maybe sing a little song in your head. To distract your brain. Hmm? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a student that's amazing at watercolours and acrylics, but really struggles with gouache because they um, 
they haven't had much dealing with it, so it, they find it tricky. But in the in the same way, I've got a you know if a student has only ever done watercolors, then they find acrylics difficult. If a student has only ever done acrylics, they find watercolor difficult. So it's just what you're used to or what you know. Do you see? I find it really easy, but maybe it's because I've been doing it a long time. It's easy to not know what, like, um, the consistency you have to have the paint. Cons paint consistency is really hard, and it can and it changes depending yeah. on what you want to do with it. And I think um, the fact that it dries very differently than how it originally looked when yeah. you first put it on the paint yeah. is quite disconcerting. Yes, I would go with that. So I think it's quite. I do think it's quite tricky sometimes. You've done a bit of gouache, haven't yeah, you, Jackie? I, I like it, but it's um, but I do think it's hard, hard to get your head round. I do think it's hard if they don't do watercolour, yeah. But you like watercolour. You've done a lot of watercolour, haven't you? Yeah, but I think watercolour is easier Yep. I'm going to try my lighter green, which is going to be very lemony, and a little bit of white, perhaps. The green toadstools yeah. you did. It's on the stairs. I, I showed them that earlier. Yeah. Um, um, oh, that was nice. That's. Can you reach the back there? Because you can show them. I don't think I'll frame that. It'll be on the, the pile. So I've added more lemon. Yeah, watercolour and gouache is nice. That was just on burgundy card. And if you really stab your brush and it's not too wet, you get you splay the bristles and it gives you nice dotty effect to make it more like fronds. Mm -hmm. um, I've added more to because I've got two greens. You know the original green that we put down there? Yeah. I've added a lot more lemon and a tiny bit of white. The last bit. You can pause me. You know, Amanda, how many people would have loved to have done that to me over the years. Unmute me. With what? Yeah. Yeah, we can give you all the links. I do go quick. But I know, I did, I did, I did that. Not in your room, but that's in the room, in mine. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I left some of them on the floor. <laughs> but I'm doing less of it over the, uh, the darker areas to keep the darks through. And we've still got 20 minutes left. I know that doesn't sound a lot, but it's not a lot, no. The classes just fly by. I mean, if you were thinking you were waiting for a bus for two hours, I mean, how long does that feel? Oh, but when you when you're painting, yeah. but yeah, before before COVID, you see, we never had online lessons of any sort, so um, people just had to do what they did in the class and try and remember. But. But now you've got the, the links, you can just... I think they just print off the cover now. 
It is. Because this is your time, isn't it, in the lesson? You've bought that time, so yeah. you don't feel as bad. Yeah, I can't see the dishes very well. Anymore. No. <laughs> You're not thinking, oh, I need to get this done, or, oh, I should have done this today. I'll bring this a bit closer so you can see. And then we've got blades of grass to do. So that's, that's mine. Oh, well, oh, then first it. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> this is what you should have done. Oh, oh my goodness. I always do this towards the end because <laughs> yeah. I don't like to make it. See, your mossy grassy bottom is very nice. So, but it's just me on some highlights. Yeah. And um, lemon and white, is it? Yeah. I mean, you could have it a tiny like dry, bit. It's not like dry brush strokes. Mm. Dryish, yeah, because I use the one of these. Hang on, no. Like no, I use one of these. Oh, okay. And really dab it. Mm -hmm. it so you've like got dots. Oh. And then just dot upwards. That way? Yeah. yeah. Oh. There you go, look. Oh. So you don't want an overly dry brush. And then it's really stabbing, it won't ruin, honestly. Keep going, it's really stamp. Pretend it's going to go like that. There you go. Yeah, and, then, and then just lightly stab over the top and you'll get both the lines. If your brush is too dry, or you haven't got a lot of paint, you might need to mix quite a lot of paint on there. Okay. You can use the same brush, but you just dry it off a little bit. And then I'll do the grass blades in a minute. I don't want to, I don't want to rush, rush. But if, if you leave, but, but before you leave the building today, if you give us, uh, or give Jackie your email address, we can email you the link oh, okay. of the video yeah. so yeah. you can, um, and I'll do Monday nights as well. Is it working for you now? But it is, yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I just forgot that last bit actually. Because the stuff, you see, people think you, you ruin your brushes, but as long as when you've finished your painting for the day, you clean yeah. your brush and, you know, you put your bristles back, you're all right. I mean, naturally, uh, nylon brushes start to splay with use over time anyway. Although we have found a good hack, haven't we, Jackie, to get them back? So that's good. Yeah, I'm doing 15 some places than I do. <laughs> yeah, it's par for the course. And that's just getting that turn effect, isn't yes. it? Yes. Because when we do the grass, it's going to be slightly different. Yeah. And it's going to be more smooth. Janet, I hope you're doing all right with yours online. I think what makes it tricky like this is that we haven't got lots of layers of land to get depth, do you know what I mean? Because it is just this one thing in the foreground, whereas with others, you know, with a landscape, you've got a background, a mid-ground, a foreground, and then other, other little bits. Mm. So we're having to try and make this one foreground in layers to give us the depth. should start coming together now or you should still feel a, you should feel a little bit happier with it maybe um 
and you can use it once you've done a bit of the frondy bits you can use a smaller brush if you want to give it a bit more of a definition do it as a little wiggle and a wobble It's not. It isn't rubbish. It's just not. It's not the same as mine. But that doesn't mean it rub is rubbish. I mean, I have. I have actually copied you, Deb, because I've put more green at the top. Because I liked your green. So actually, you're a trendsetter. And of course, normally, if you're at home, you probably wouldn't do everything in two two hours exactly, would you? You know, you'd do a bit, and then you'd come back to it later, and so you know, for two hours concentrated drawing or painting, it's not a, a natural thing to do. And I'd love to give you more time, but we just don't have it. I think once you've got a nice dark base to the foreground and more greens in, it does work nicely. And with gouache, you can... Because um, have you got art supplies, Deborah, at home? Or Yes. Because you can use watercolour paper with gouache if you wanted to. And, yeah, and just colour the background like a watercolour. Yeah. You can just paint it if you want. You can wet it. You can do it however you like with gouache. So that's what's really nice. And and you can, unlike watercolour, as we're finding out now, you can put light colours on top of dark colours. So you can really mix it and move it around. Brilliant. I think that's, yeah. Oh, good, Janet. Thank you. I wasn't expecting to see a comment from you, so that's nice. Um, so the, we've got... Just over 10 minutes left so I'll, I'll be doing the um, the blades of grass which I'm going to do in a different green I think I'm going to use the cerulean blue and the cadmium yellow so the orangey yellow does anybody need any more the orangey yellow and the bright blue but more yellow this time it's a very yellow green the background was more of a blue green this is a very yellow green and I might even add a little bit of white. And I'm using the smaller flat brush. Yeah. To do the cobwebs? Absolutely. If you've got a white gel pen, that will work. Right. Often I will use a gel pen, a, a black pen or a, a black liner pen and a gel pen if I need darks and lights. Yeah. Um, if, if I can't get my paint fluid enough or, I, you know, if I can't get my hands steady enough, yeah. then that's exactly what I use. Um, and in fact, I might even use a bit of white gel pen for some extra highlights yeah. afterwards anyway. So it's a lot more versatile than you first think, perhaps. I don't know. It, it, it's like a book illustration, isn't it? Ah, yeah. So oh, yeah. That would look lovely. It's good that you're thinking of other possibilities with it as well. Yeah. 
So this one kind of goes hand in hand with the um, snail eating berries. It's that kind of feel mm -hmm. that we did a couple of weeks ago. Or was it last week? No, it wasn't last week because you were here last week, Amanda, weren't you? And it was yeah, the it was the, um, the sunset that gave yeah. you nowhere to hide. This one, you can hide with this, can't you? Because yeah. you can shove a bit of grass, you can... It was the sea. I just, I covered too much over at the back that I'd already done. It was, yeah. I think, I think it's, I haven't let it dry now. I think I, I think You've gone in while it's too wet. wet. You do lose a few defining lines yeah, then, got. yeah. But you can always go back in again, you see? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what's really good about it. Yeah. But, like, if, if you wanted to and you've got a white gel pen and you think, oh, that's not really bright enough, you could go and just outline in a bit of a white gel yeah. pen. Yeah. So that's what I've learned. Yeah. Well, that's it. I think the important thing is when you when you finish a picture in a class you ask yourself if i were to do this what would i do differently yeah. again yeah. um some people do go and do it again don't they, they yeah. do yeah, yeah. Um, it's not well now you know what to expect because that's yeah. that's the big thing in a class mm. you know you even if you knew what the subject matter was you don't know what the exact image is so you don't always know what to expect. Because it's blurry. Yes. Yeah, you can't um, make it very watery, like watercolour, and put it at the top and then draw it up. What you, it, you could do that a little bit. It, yeah. it's, if you're on watercolour paper, yeah. you could really wet your paper yeah. and then make a runny colour first yeah. and then drop it on the top and let it run down. I'll show you. I'll show you. I've got some scrap water to go to paper. Yeah. I have scrap water to the paper. Oh yeah, that's that's filthy. Let's um, we'll clean the bit of this scrap because I paint on the back of a lot of my paintings, but sometimes the backs get a bit damaged. So I'll show you what you can do. So if I it's going to be dirty water, but it doesn't matter. Um, if I really wet the watercolour paper first, really wet it, and I'll just go with a bit of blue. Mm -hmm. It is slightly heavier than watercolour, yeah. but you can let it run and, and let it do whatever you want. But because it's, I mean, you can actually get cauliflowers in it if you're not careful. Uh, but actually a background like this doesn't really matter if you've got cauliflowers or not but you can do on um, watercolour paper a wet in wet background yes. and um, let it smudge and blend and then when it dries then you can go back in so yeah. whereas with watercolour you'd have to do a very soft background and then gradually get darker with each layer with gouache it doesn't matter no, I could I could when that dries I could easily put white on top of this if I wanted to yeah. so you can use it like a watercolour yeah. um, the the only difference is it won't dry 30% lighter like watercolour does it will dry it almost the colour that it is look if I get the hair dryer on that yeah. which is probably a bit easier so it will go a bit more chalky but what I would say is if you're doing it like this, that you need to make up some dilute paint to start with, otherwise it will stain the paper. Um, so if you if you just picked up a dollop of blue, neat, um, and then tried to massage it into the paper, where that first initial dollop went, mm -hmm. it would stain the paper, unlike watercolour. Um, yeah, so... Yeah. I could I could do that now. I could do that now. Um, Hang on, let's find it a, a bit more. So you basically, when you're doing a runny background, you just make the paint runny to start with. Yes. But yeah, I could put a ladybird straight onto there. Yeah. No problem. 
it works really well so you can use watercolor paper. i mean we use colored papers and stuff to show people what can be done in different ways um but yeah you can do anything you like watercolor paper well you can use watercolor paper for acrylics as well and pastels it's a good all-round paper because it's heavy and it's textured but yeah so you can do a watercolory style with that so there's the grassy bits kind of works Yeah, the yeah. gouache paint. Have yeah. we still got a little set knocking about in a folder? No. Not in a folder. Yeah, okay. Can because we've we've run out and we from that place we only order a few times a year so we've got a we're due to do an order aren't we um and it takes a couple of weeks to come in but you can borrow yeah you can borrow that it's not exactly the same paint to be it, it is gouache but it's not the same make that we've been using no, today um but uh, i hope you've enjoyed it anyway yeah. it's different isn't it it's it's, it's yeah. even yeah. It, it's it's different to watercolor and it's different yeah. to acrylics and it's not it's not like anything else it is more like painting with emulsion to be honest i think that's the no no you're fine that's why i found that out so you can borrow that oh jackie can jackie will happily take your money do you want to do it on did we use this yesterday no So I will say thank you for joining me online today and um, I will post this image in the group but um, I look forward to seeing what you've done and you can add more detail if you wanted to um, or you could leave it as it is, it's, it's very much up to you but uh, I do look forward to seeing what you've created so thanks ever so much for your company, take care, see you soon, <laughs> bye bye everyone. <laughs>